This is South Armagh victims campaigner Willie Fraser. For 10 years he's led the campaign to hold Colonel Gaddafi to account for his support of the IRA. Gaddafi will be held accountable. No surrender! No surrender! Tonight we tell the exclusive inside story of the victims' battle for justice. The only way that we can hit Libya and try and stop this from happening again is to hit them with compensation for victims. The families of some of the victims now want compensation from Libya. Willie Fraser is one of those whose family has suffered more than most at the hands of the IRA. I had no childhood when I was growing up. From I was probably 10 or 11 years of age, I can remember our home being attacked uh, with bombs, with paddle bombs, our house being shot at. Uh, I've had my father murdered, my two uncles murdered, my two cousins murdered. I've had two brothers that tried to kill one on four occasions. I've been shot at myself, I've been blew up. Um, I've had six of my mates murdered. Right, you put them through there? Fifteen years on from the IRA ceasefire, Willie Fraser says families in South Armagh are still picking up the pieces of lives shattered by paramilitaries. I can still remember the men trying to sledgehammer our front door in, although it is over 30 odd years ago. I can still, some nights I wake up and sweat because I can hear a thump and I think it's a sledgehammer hitting the door. This is what we have in for For years, Willie Fraser has been a firebrand opponent of the IRA. A long-time champion of the rights of the IRA's victims. You think you're intimidating me, but... Don't stop! Don't friend! Just stop it, will you? In 1999, Willie Fraser helped set up an organisation called FAIR, Families Acting for Innocent Relatives, the word innocent being included, to distinguish between those they saw as victims and perpetrators. One of those in the group is Manya Dickinson. Her father, Ken, a building contractor from Kilkeel, was blown up by an undercar bomb just yards from the family home. Manya was on a school hockey trip to Scotland when news came through of her father's death. Everybody around me, all my hockey team, started to cry. And every single one of them, when they were phoning home, started to cry. And I didn't know why, and I couldn't get through to Mum on the phone, because it was constantly engaged. And I know now I shut it off the hook in case I did get through, because she didn't want to tell me over the phone. And Mum just met me at the bottom of the boat, and she said, um, bad men, Manny, bad men have got your daddy. And I just, I didn't know exactly what it meant, but I just, I was just totally and utterly devastated. The sound tax that killed Ken Graham came from Libya. My dad never got to see me get married or my sister graduate from school, from high school or from college. Or never see. The main thing is my children are never going to know them. And uh, that's hard for me because I was very close to my dad. And I know he'd love them to pieces and he would be so proud of them. The bombing of Tripoli in 1986 led to a massive increase in Libyan support for the IRA. Three weeks after the release of Al Megrahi, Willie Fraser and Michelle Williamson, who lost her parents in the Shanko bomb, were part of a delegation to the United States. The primary reason for the trip was a long-planned protest against Colonel Gaddafi. But this was a new Willie Fraser. Since the government's change of policy, he and I had friends in high places. One of the reasons for coming over was to have a number of protests because Colonel Gaddafi was going to be here. But we've been asked to tone them down. Who's asked you to tone them Well, it has come from uh, the Foreign Office, it has come from our own politicians and also the legal team where they've been fed information to say that everything is moving along very quickly and the possibility of something taking place is very positive. A 
complex set of conversations were taking place in different parts of the world. Willie Fraser was being kept in touch with events in London by Geoffrey Donaldson. Uh, Geoffrey's going to meet uh, the Libyans tomorrow and he's been in touch with the Foreign Office here and the British Embassy are taking a keen interest and in another fact the Ambassador himself has taken an interest and hopefully will be in touch. So hopefully we'll hear this morning from the British Embassy who will be able to help us out. So Geoffrey Donaldson is meeting um, the, the Libyans um, at the Embassy in London tomorrow. Are you, are you surprised by how fast this is moving? It's moving very quickly now. It certainly is. Yeah, a lot of things have changed. A lot of people who weren't speaking to us are now keen to speak to us. So it's a good sign. Minutes later, an invitation came through from the British Embassy. The uh, British Embassy, British Embassy, meeting this afternoon, half three, right. the best time we can put it on. Is that confirmed? Well, if you just give him a ring out of confirmed time. Right, no problem. Well, that ties yeah. in with the, the email I got from Jeffrey, or well, sorry, the text I got from Jeffrey. We don't know the exact detail, but sources close to the negotiations have told us what's on the table. Potentially half a billion pounds to be paid into some type of trust fund for the victims of IRA violence. And we're hearing that also on the table, potentially money for the victims of loyalist and state violence the inclusion of those victims in any deal that's being hammered out behind closed doors. Willie Fraser had an hour-long meeting at the British Embassy. How'd it go? Very well. I'm actually very impressed. Uh, things have obviously moved a lot. What had obviously moved since his arrival in the States was that he had been sounded out on the idea of a much wider compensation fund, which could include not only IRA victims, but victims from all sides. Any more indications coming that these proposals may include other victims, apart from, from the victims of IRA terrorism, uh, that other victims will be included? At the end of the day, if we get the people looked after that needs to be looked after, we're not interested in what happens after that. If other people can benefit, so be it. You've always said that the perpetrators should never benefit. Yeah, I've always said that, and I still believe that. But what I'm saying, that's not my call. Uh, my call was that we would do all we could to bring people to account for what happened over this last 35 years. We, if this is successful, we will have done that. Now, what happens after that is down to our politicians. At the Libyan...